a black child raised by a mother and father is more likely to succeed by every independent metric than a white child who is raised by a single mother. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not bashing single mothers. I think that they're modern day heroes. The point is that there's two parent privilege in our country, not white privilege in our country. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here with a new video. Today, we're going to check it out. Charlie Cook shatters the white privilege myths. What the left won't tell you. Okay, this is gonna be amazing. I call him Charlie Kick the color of kicking us. Let's get right into this video. White privilege is a racist myth that is rooted in bigotry, trying to classify people based on their skin color. If you are a racist, you have something to apologize for. If you're a white person who is not a racist, you have nothing to apologize sure. for. And anyone who makes you apologize just based on the color of their skin, of your skin, they're the racist and you're not. It's that simple. And so this idea of our systems are racist also does not stand up against any sort of cross-examination of different ethnic groups in our country. White people on average, if you were to classify it, and again, I don't like the over-racialization of our country, but if that's where the left wants to lead this, the facts don't even support their entire charge against our country is that Asian Americans and Indian Americans are far wealthier on average in our country than white Americans. This idea that every single white person in the country is living a life of luxury and convenience is totally untrue. And according True. to not just the Hoover Institution, but U.S. Census data and government labor data, this is the greatest statistic to dispel it, which is that a black child raised by a mother and father is more likely to succeed by every independent metric than a white child who is raised by a single mother. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not bashing single mothers. I think that they're modern day heroes. The point is that there's two parent privilege in our country, not white privilege in our country. And if we're serious about rebuilding the black family, which we should be, we should be putting fathers back in the home, but be very careful to try to, to, try to connect disparities necessarily with discrimination. Mm. And so there's other parts of privilege as well in our country that are non-racial privilege. For example, anyone here the firstborn child? I am. You know that you have an exponentially higher likelihood of succeeding than the second child or the third child or the youngest child? You ever heard of firstborn privilege? Probably not. How about only, anyone here an only child? You have way higher likelihood of succeeding. Every independent study shows this. Now, we can laugh and chuckle, of course. The point is that there are different inputs at times for why certain disparities are created. And blaming all of it on deep-seated, harbored racial resentment is not just incorrect, it's really corrosive mm. for all of us. Instead of just looking at skin color, look at other circumstantial factors such as education, such as two-parent households. And the argument that, they'll, that the activists will make, and I'm sure someone here will make the argument, is that racism created those systems, right? That it was racist. And I can actually agree with part of that. Just be very specific of what systems those are. And if we're serious about improving the livelihood of our fellow countrymen, maybe we should be less focused on government welfare and more focused on work and literacy education and bringing fathers mm. back into the home. So this was really an amazing speech. Like, listen to it properly, you know, it's beautiful. And Charlie have said this word several times during his debates. This is really important, and I feel like more people have to see this. The Black Lives Matter activists, they have to see this. When I hear some people saying um, the Black Lives Matter BLM, BLM activists coming to say um, the whites, there's white privilege, the whites have to ap apologize, that the white, there's nothing like a black man is a racist. Like, it's crazy because for me personally, if you are a white man and you are a racist, you have something to apologize for. But if you are a white man and you are not a racist, you have absolutely nothing to apologize for. Even if your forefathers did something bad to the black communities, they enslaved them, you have nothing to apologize for because you were not born, you had no choice, and you were not a witness of any single thing. I know history proved what happened but you never encountered it. Every single person who hear about the slavery, the, um, the how black we've been treated before in history, we surely feel sorry and pity. But that does not mean it was your fault. You understand? It was not your fault. 
it's, it was an art. It was a way of business during those times. People were making money out from it. And they were seeing that as a normal thing. Unlike now that it's something that has been abolished and it's been bad. You understand? During those times, it's, it's normal. You honestly, oh, okay. It's normal. It's a way of business. But right now, it's terrible. And human, human feeling, me, thinking about it for me is very terrible I to own a slave and treat them callously. But that does not mean the whites living right now did that. It's something that has happened a long time ago and they owe no one any apology. There's nothing like a white privilege that a white man gets this, a white man gets this, than a black man with a black sounding name can get this too. There is no single thing like that. I know there's politics in the world, there's politics, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean white people are free or they're able to get this that a black man cannot get. There is no single thing currently in America that a white man can do that a black man cannot do. It was not like this in the 18th centuries, even in the 17th centuries. But currently, there is no single thing that a white man can do that a black man cannot do. It's as simple as that. But people come, keep on saying there is white privilege, there's white privilege, the whites are getting the job, the black are not getting... Whenever a black man is being treated badly, he refers back to white privilege. Just notice them. And whenever you hear someone talking about the white privilege, they have an attitude issue. Like a massive attitude issue. Black families ought to have the black mother and the black mother. The par both parents training up a child. Not a single parent. You understand? If you read start, if you check stats, you will know single parenting of a black mother. The child tends to turn out bad. I'm not saying single mothers don't do their best, but according to stats, stats don't lie. The reason why is because the child tends to fend for family at an early stage. And I feel like they don't have someone to look up to, like a father figure or something like that to look up to to, to guide them. So both parenting, it's really, really important. Right now, what we're having now is single parenting, single parenting, divorce year and day. It is really bad. And it's causing massive damages to the children's life. I'm it's serious. I love how Charlie, this speech so far was so beautiful and precise. And something like a lot of people have to hear. Like they have to hear. This is really an important speech. Comment down below, think about this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to us, Minas Khan, subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers. Pass that 808, that don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all